But this acceleration is not nearly um, so, uh, well, we actually have to break this into components. How do we know that we have to break this into components? Because this vector is neither parallel nor anti-parallel to either axis, whereas this is parallel to the x-axis. If you're neither parallel nor anti-parallel to an axis, you've got to be broken into components. So let's make a separate little triangle to break this into components. Here's our acceleration. Remember, we have to draw a right triangle. And remember that the legs should be parallel to the axes. Well, I can draw a leg here that's parallel to the x-axis. And then I can draw a leg here that's parallel to the y-axis. And now I can erase the parts of the lines that we don't need. I know these will be perpendicular because the axes are perpendicular. So this is a right triangle. The components need arrows. What direction should this arrow be in? To the right. And how about this arrow? Those are parts that people often forget. Now, why did I put those arrows on there to get the signs? So let's build a good habit and put the signs in first. So a sub x, is that positive or negative? Positive. Because that's in our positive x direction. And a sub y, is that positive or negative? Positive. Because that's in the, up in the positive direction. One of the biggest mistakes people make, again, is forgetting the signs. Well, do that first, and you won't forget the signs. As soon as you put in the arrows, you might as well put in the signs, because that was the whole reason we figured out the arrows in the first place. Now we have to break these into components. Now, where does this number 0.82 go? Is that the x, the y, or the, or the hypotenuse? The overall vector doesn't get a sign. The overall vector represents the hypotenuse. Now we have to break these into components. Well, we know this is 60. So what equation can we use to figure out this x component? 0.82 times cosine of 60. That's right. You might start like this. So Katoa, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. <coughs> but what's the adjacent side? That's a sub x. That's adjacent to the 60. And the hypotenuse, we already know is 0.82. Now remember that when we're doing trig, we talked about this last time, we don't use signs when we're doing trig. That is, we don't use positive and negative signs because this is just about the length. So this equation is only going to tell me the magnitude of A. Um, so I have a little symbol that I invented that's useful. When a variable only represents a magnitude, I like to put a dot on top. So this dot indicates that this is only going to tell us the magnitude of A. We already know the sign of A anyway. And that gives us that A sub x is 0.82 times cosine 60. Once you've done a lot of these, you can skip this step and go straight to here. I think some of you were already suggesting that we go straight to here. But if you're in any doubt, go back to Sokoto. Let's use our calculators to figure that out. Someone said 0.41. That sounds good. And over here, we know that's positive. As usual, make sure that you're in degree mode when we're working with degrees, not radians. So what equation would we use to figure out a sub y? Sine, cosine, I mean sine 60 times 0.82. That's right. We could start with a fraction, or we could just go straight to this step over here. And that gives us? Yeah, gives us something different, because here we're taking the sine, not the cosine? Yeah, I said. Okay. So we'll round that off to 0 0.71. Now, what should we do with these numbers? We should immediately build them back up into our framework. Remember to put things in your overall framework. So a sub x here would be positive 0.41 meters per second squared, and a sub y would be positive. 0.71. Can we also put in time? Just because of the Sure. Did they tell us the time? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We should put that in. What was that? 8.7. Right. That's the one thing I won't put a sign on because times are always positive. And we put that on both frameworks. As we talked about, the time would be the same for both of these. Notice how I don't try to break things into components in my main picture, because then the main picture might get too messy. Instead, I'm breaking out a separate triangle to break things into components. 
On a lot of problems, you're going to have to break maybe four or five things into components, and your main picture is going to get very messy if you do it all in the same picture. Incidentally, uh, remember the other topic we're going to try to get to today is working with forces. Well, we're really already working on that because for every single force problem, you're going to have to start by breaking things into components, just like we are here. So this is going to be a very important skill, not just for kinematics. All right, so where's that? Uh, something I haven't done yet is write down what the question was. Well, the question is basically asking us for our displacement. So let's put in question marks to show what the question is asking us for. So do we need more numbers, or are we ready now to pick out some equations? Two, three, we're good. Yeah, we got three numbers, so now we can just pick out equations. We can use our handout to do that. So what's the correct equation? Um, delta x equals the initial times 2 plus 1 half ut squared, and that's also x. That's right. Now let's remember to say, put in all the subscripts here. This would be a sub x and v initial x. What's the quickest way to pick that out? Well, remember the one variable that we don't care about here is v final. So we pick out the equation that's missing v final. Well, here's the equation that's missing v final. And now we can just plug in. So v initial x is positive 7.3. Time is 8.7. And our acceleration is positive 0.41. And the time is 8.7. And now we can use algebra to solve for delta x. This problem is pretty simple because it's already solved for delta x. So we can just use our calculator. Uh, it's 8.7 squared that. I made that same mistake last time. All right, so we got to make sure we are yeah, squaring this time here. That's every right. Every single homework problem. <laughs> and I used so many attempts that I forgot to square my times. <laughs> and I made like 80%. <laughs> What number did we get for this? 79. I'll just round that out to 79. Good. What units would this be in? In meters. And did this come out positive or negative? Positive. Which is what we would expect because we were moving in the positive direction. What do we do now? Well, we do it all over again for the y component. And here we're missing the same variable. So we use the same equation. But now the equation is delta y equals v initial y t plus 1 half a sub y t squared. Again, don't forget to put in those sub y subscripts. Otherwise, the variables aren't correct. Uh, so v initial y, well, this one should be easier because v initial y was 0. So this term is going to drop out. We just have 1 half times 0.71 times 8.7 squared. What did you get for that? 26.86. Yeah, so I'll round that out to uh, 27 just to, to aggressively round things off. Now, how would we enter this in um, your computerized homework? Well, on the homework, they would probably have said something like express your answer in terms of x hat and y hat, or in terms of i hat and j hat. Yeah, I was like, what do you mean I'm wrong? Do you think it doesn't have to use x hat? It was especially frustrating because in class, our teacher he uses, uses x, x hat and y hat, and then all the homework, like, it doesn't give you a warning. So it yeah, and then it, until you type it in the wrong thing, and then they go, oh, this doesn't determine on the variable. Yeah. So it's like, well, then I don't know what you're asking me. Well, wait a second, wait a second. That's not true. Doesn't the computer always tell you what variables to express your answer no, in? No. Hmm. It just says express it in like the components or something yeah. like that. Using vector components. Using vector yeah. components. And they don't say and they don't specify and what do they X, want? Y, Z, I, and G. I, they wanted I and J? Yeah. yeah. OK. Huh. And then they, it uses yeah. your attempt and takes away. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, that's definitely really fun. All right. All right, well, you will see some problems on, on mastering physics, I think, where you should use X hat and Y hat. But it looks like in that case, they'll tell you. And I guess the default here is i hat and j hat. All right, so how would we express this then in terms of i hat and j hat? You can do 79 i hat plus 27 j hat. Correct. Many times you also just said like commas. Yeah. You could use commas. 
All right, well, basically, it just depends on um, different problems are going to express expect in different in different cases. Um, I, I'm surprised that you the, use commas there. Usually, they want you to um, add the two components to get the overall vector. So this gives us r. The overall vector r is this direction, uh, this magnitude in the x direction plus this magnitude in the y direction. We know that uh, this just represents the x component and this represents the y component. 